This episode of Motoring Box is proudly supported by Century Batteries. Welcome back to Motoring Box. I'm Sean McKellar and this is my 2002 Mitsubishi Magna Rally Art, which I've owned for about two weeks now. And even though I've had it for two weeks, I've barely even looked at this thing because I've been so busy. But in the evenings after work, I have popped down a couple of times to start going through it just to see what I've actually bought here. You know, for a 20 year old secondhand car, which has got visible sort of neglect, I am expecting some problems and I have found a couple. And I've also taken the passenger seat out to try and clean it to see what results we can get. So it's gonna be really interesting to pop the dirty driver's seat out and just compare the two to see how they look. Have I actually gotten some good results or not? I think I have. So that is really today's episode. We're gonna be going over the car. We'll give you guys a bit of a walk around. I'll show you what I've found. Uh, hopefully we don't find too many more things. Um, I'll have a look at the spare set of wheels, see if they need to be restored or not. And I will continue stripping out the seats to clean everything up. So come on in and let's have a look. So as I mentioned, I did take the passenger seat out to clean it and have a look at this archeology span we found here. So first of all, We've got a Coles receipt. They bought a four leaf salad, Huggies Ultra Nappies. They bought an oak chocolate flavored milk and a roast chicken whole. $30.35, that sounds like a good night in to me. Amanda, I'm terribly sorry to tell you, but I have your songs. And to be honest, if these are your songs and you just neglected this disc and you left it in the car, you don't deserve them. They are my songs now. I've got, I think that's a chamois. It's like really stiff as a board, but it kind of looks leathery like a shiny does. Hopefully there's nothing hiding inside it. No, we're good. Nothing sinister there. Uh, we got some Tally Ho Rolly papers, Australia's finest, 10 natural gummed papers. There are actually some papers in there still. I actually thought this was a sock, but it is open at both ends. So, what that's from a, an air freshener so we got that there's a leaf uh, that looks like a mcdonald's chip from about 10 years ago we have a receipt for some formal wear and we have a receipt here from super cheap auto for some wedge bulbs uh, we've got a green pen so look we are doing pretty well yeah that'll work for sure but there was actually a bluetooth speaker in here i'm guessing because there were no tunes I would never <laughs> propose that as a good solution, but it is an easy solution. Uh, there is a little tweeter cover for the driver's door because it's missing. I'm guessing that yeah, the tabs are broken. You can find these for sale. Uh, there's a bit of a zip tie, got like a little car key ring. That's kind of cute. And we've got some money. So we got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 cents. We've got an earring as well. So the other night I came down here to look at something specific because these cars have an issue with the heater core, which is right in the middle of the dashboard. If we looked in there, you can almost see it. They have an issue with it leaking. There's these little plastic connectors which join onto it. And when that happens, it is basically a dash out job. So what people do instead is they simply take off the heater hoses. So you can see this top hose here is just hanging nowhere. That goes inside to the, the heater core. And the other one, is actually looped back on itself really awesomely. So yeah, that's gonna be a fun job. I do have the parts on order already. It is a new heater core, even though the core itself is probably fine. It's those plastic connectors. I'll put them up on screen. So that'll fix it, but it does mean that this dash has to come out. So seeing as we are stripping the rest of the interior and seeing as I didn't have any trim or stereo here in the first place, that is making our job a little bit easier. But yeah, the whole dash has to come out. So yeah, that's a really common Magna problem if you're buying one. We are gonna have to dump the coolant to sort of fix the heater and also when you do the uh, timing belt, you need to change the water pump and a couple of cam seals and uh, there are a few seals in there which need to all be changed at once. I do need to find a new air box because see this little metal clip here? There's meant to be another one here, but you can't actually fit it because the little bracket that it hooks into is broken. And one other thing I didn't show you is inside the boot last time, so. Uh, I've got my timing belt kit sitting there ready to go and we've got the other three or other four I should say there's another Enki wheel there in the boot so we may as well start with these actually let's pull these out and have a look at them all right 
right, sit rep. I'm pretty happy with these, to be honest. I reckon they're gonna clean up pretty good. Wheel number one has some rash here and here. A few little nicks around the rim, but that's about it. Center cap does need painting. It's a very similar story for the rest of these, to be honest. There's a bit of rash here on this second one. There's a little bit of nasty rash there. Center cap needs painting. And this one here was the spare, and that's arguably the best looking one. There is no rash at all. Oh, actually, there is a tiny bit and no center cap. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, guys. I am kind of judging what sort of restoration this car is going to have. It's probably not going to be like a show car standard. So are these wheels going to be good enough? I'm almost leaning towards yes. But as soon as you put tires on them, new tires, it kind of makes it tougher to restore them down the track if we have to. So if we change our mind, definitely think they're going to look a lot better than the speedy carbines. But you know, one thing I discovered is this car still has the stock Coney suspension. In a future video, we'll put this up on jack stands and we'll have a look under the car. From what I've seen, it looks surprisingly neat. So yeah, I'll put these aside for now and we'll continue stripping out the inside. So if I didn't know any better, this looks to me like a vomit bag. So look, I know Magna Rally Arts have pretty impressive performance. Maybe that would have a side effect on your passengers. As a plus, it looks like it is unused. So that might come in handy. And we have some remnants here of a stereo install. Speaking of which, have a look at these. These are actually screws which are coming out of the floor. So maybe he had an amp. So it will be good to get this carpet out right at the end. But let's have a look at that driver's seat. I wanna see how it looks. So have a look at this. This is our driver's seat. So obviously, as I showed in the purchase video, there is a bit of wear there on the bolster. But the center of this seat should be beautiful red. You know, have a look at that. It's pretty black. So let's compare it to the passenger seat. So this seat does not always look like this. I've actually cleaned this up with a upholstery cleaner the other night. It's not perfect, like I think some of the red sections have probably faded with time, so you're probably not gonna get that really bright red over everything. It's a bit of shine there, sort of stopping you from seeing the end of the seat there, but look, it's a night and day difference, so I really hope I can get this driver's seat looking pretty good. There's gonna be a limit of what we can achieve. I didn't do the headrest on this yet, so that needs to be done. And this is the machine I've used. So this is a Bissell Spot Clean Automate. It's basically, um, an upholstery cleaner for cars. Uh, I've held off on buying one of these for a long time just because I've read a lot of people complaining about the hose is really short, but they now have a really long hose on these. So that was kind of the gripe that a lot of people had, but it now doesn't have that problem anymore. So let's see what we can achieve here. It's gonna be really interesting. You can kind of see, I'll have to empty this out. That is the liquid that came out of that seat right there. So I can only guess what is gonna come out of that one. Now, I'm not an upholstery cleaning expert, but let me show you what I did to clean this one up. So, I've got our Bissell back here. I've got a solution of sort of upholstery cleaner and water in the side here. So when you turn this thing on, this thing actually has a trigger, which when you push it, it'll shoot that solution out. So you can use it to sort of wet down the material. And after that, I actually used some of this Vanish. It's basically a deep cleaning carpet cleaner. It's a foaming one. So I basically foamed this whole chair up and then I've just got this brush here, which I used to kind of agitate it. So let's see how it goes. This looks bad, but I promise you it works. See what I mean? A little bit scary. <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically then got this brush and just went over everything. Do the bolsters a little bit, but I really want to focus on these parts. I think this is gonna get some results looking at that color. That looks pretty horrendous. So we need to do all of it, but we need to focus on the parts which are mainly touching human body because that's where all the slime comes from. You can hit these again and again a couple of times. But yeah, it'll get to a point where you're getting diminishing returns. So we'll just have to judge that as we go. All right, pretty happy with the, the base. It's 
just move on up here. Do the bolsters quickly. Look at that. <laughs> Get ready for this guys, this is going to be amazing. We'd better hit this with the vac and we'll see what, uh, what happens. I think it's going to be pretty crazy. Right, I've gone over it a second time and I dare say, I reckon when this one dries, it's gonna look roughly the same as the other one. It is still a bit darker just because it is still quite wet. But we do have quite a bit of the color back. They should look pretty decent together. So all that's left now is to do the sides, the back, um, the two headrests, and then we'll get in here and we'll pull this one out as well. So this leaves us now with the center console to remove so we can get the carpet out. You can straight away see there's two screws, one on each side here at the back. Okay, that is in pretty poor condition. There we go. Okay, she's still fixed on down here, so. Those out, and then that's it. Oh God, I tell you what guys, it has been super hot today and I am roasting down here under this roof. So I'm gonna call it a day, but we got a lot done. So we got the interior stripped out, we got the carpet stripped out. It's gonna give me an opportunity to clean, vacuum, wipe everything under here, pull out any wiring which shouldn't be there. Uh, we're basically undoing all of the damage which previous owners have done to this car. We're gonna clean it all up. And of course, carpet. Don't mind how it looks at the moment because it's just all in a big pile but I'm not going to show you how I clean this but it's really simple you just wet it all down you soap it up so I usually just put washing powder all over it then throw the hose on it and kind of agitate it with a, a broom or something and then I just pressure wash it with a gurney until it looks clean until there's no more soap coming out of it and then I just hang it up somewhere for like a week so I'm going to go and do that 
Uh, but yeah, feeling good. Um, doing a job like this is a really good way to kind of make a used car feel almost new again because all of the smells and the sort of old feeling generally comes from the cloth seats, it comes from the carpet, it can also come from the headliner, but I'm gonna see if I can get away with just leaving that alone. So cleaning everything up is a great way to sort of reset things and make the car feel fresh, new and like yours again. And with those seats, it's not just how they look when they're clean, it's how they feel. Before, when they're dirty and there's a lot of sort of human oil and slime in the material, they kind of felt soft and a little bit wet, even though they were dry, because it's like oil. So when you clean everything up and then you feel the fabric and you sit on it, everything just feels crisp. Like it's, it's not just the smell, it's the feel as well. So really looking forward to seeing how they look when they dry out and then yeah, we'll continue the work. So it's good, we've made a start. So if you want to support the channel, please consider going to motoringbox.com and grabbing a Homegrown Heroes t-shirt. I actually want to produce a Magna shirt in the future as well, seeing as this is the new car on the channel. But in order for that to happen, I need to sell some more of these shirts first. So if you want to support the channel, do consider grabbing one of those. Otherwise, I do have motoringbox.com stickers as well, which you can see. It's a really good way to advertise the channel and show your support. I'm going to leave it here, guys. It has been a hell of a day. Really hope you enjoyed the video. Consider throwing me a like if you loved it. It helps a lot. Consider subscribing. Drop a comment. Let me know in the comments below what you reckon, what I should do. If you saw anything that I should be considering doing that I haven't done already, let me know. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. See you next time.